moving up alongside of David Pearson. Kitty Allison is just getting over a broken hip. Your sons are having themselves quite a day here in Darlington. And Bobby Allison has the lead. Bobby Allison, who won this race, and we've got a big mix-up up in turn number four. we got cars all over the racetrack in turn number four as Allison jumps into the lead and gets it, and the yellow flag is out. We had a, a half a dozen cars that looked like Tangle up in uh, turn number four. Now, they'll start sorting them out, but Bobby Ellison will hold that position in front of uh, David Pearson. It is not inconceivable, but what this race could finish under the yellow. 361 laps have been completed. You can see that is car number 70 that is literally smashed against the wall there as we had a bunch of the slower cars tangled up. J.D. McDuffie, really banged his car in there as he got involved in the skirmish. Wow! So Bobby Allison just slipping past David Pearson as the yellow is out. And in 1975, Bobby won this race in profiting from a mishap not terribly dissimilar from what we have just had here. All of the cars involved in the shut-up there, we don't can't define for you at this particular moment, but we do know that number 70 seems to be the one most brutally damaged. So the race could finish under the yellow. And Allison and Walter both think they're leading. They That's cross the line thought. almost abreast, and they're fighting with the pace car driver. So far, the man in the pace car has not indicated as to which car he thinks. He probably doesn't know either. They're probably going to have to go into the NASCAR scoring here to get a determination as to which car was in first place, because when the yellow came out, Bobby Allison had just passed Pearson, then apparently backed off just a little bit. In the meantime, Waltrip closed, and they came across that particular lap almost even. As they come around now, behind the pace car, Bobby Allison is running down low. Darrell Waltrip is so close to that pace car. He's almost in the front. The checkered flag is going to come out, and this should indicate victory for Darrell Waltrip. With Bobby Allison second, Richard Petty third, David Pearson fourth. Evaporates. Here comes Donnie Allison on the outside to challenge. He loses, and going up in there is Cale Yarborough to challenge. Back to the inside is Benny Parsons. Yarborough goes high. He smokes the tires as he goes up to fight with Waltrip. Waltrip stays with him in three. As they come to four, Parsons and Yarborough tag each other. Waltrip using a lap car out of turn number four. Here they come for the tri-oval. And banging into each other are Parsons and Yarborough in second place. Coming down for the finish now. Pulling away is Waltrip. He's blocked the outside. At the line, Darrell Waltrip wins by 12 car lengths. Waltrip has won. It's nearly a dead heat for second. The position will be won by Cale Yarborough, Benny Parsons third, Donnie Allison fourth. Sneaks a peek down low. Petty comes down to cover the spot. They open up a margin on Yarborough and Parsons. They are nose to tail. Halfway down the back stretch for second spot. The battle now. Second place as Earnhardt goes to the inside of Richard Petty. Earnhardt goes down underneath. He's got second place, but let's not count out Richard Petty. He goes underneath Dale Earnhardt and reappropriates second spot. Checkered flag for Darrell Waltrip, but here comes the battle for second. Petty gets it coming out of the fourth corner, and he will finish in the number two position. Earnhardt will run third. Kale will run fourth, and Benny Parsons will finish fifth. What a World 600 here at Charlotte Motor Speedway, Jackie Root. The 1979 World 600 is now history, and the winner is Daryl Waltrip. Now here's some current news involving you.
finish. Here is Waltrip coming to the flag. He will win it. Pearson will take second. But how does the third? Nine third. Wide open. Car number 90, just in front of Richard Petty falling to fourth. Car number 90, Ricky Rudd on the outside making a good move to take the third position away, dropping Richard Petty to fourth, Jody Ridley in the fifth. Yarborough runs fourth and things start to spring out of their trouble as Slick Johnson, a rookie, spins it around on the grass just a few laps to go. Johnson gets his car in gear and back out onto the racetrack, off the grass, comes fourth off the curb and that'll put debris on the racetrack and caution is out once again. Along with the caution, there's the white flag. They will finish under caution. And from here, Darrell Waltrip could coast home to his third career victory at the tight, tough Martinsville Speedway. of the race, giving the lead to Darrell Waltrip. And Waltrip now is about to win. There is Richard Penny, who is running in third position. It's been the lucky weeks. Last week, winning at Richmond and right here at Rockingham. Darrell Waltrip wins again, makes it two in a row, winning after Richmond last weekend and again here this afternoon. Tremendously exciting finish to this 500-mile race at Rockingham with Darrell Waltrip who played it cool and laid back in second position, watching Richard Petty run out of fuel, and then when Petty moved into the pit area, Waltrip made, went into the lead and maintained it for the final three laps to pull off the victory here this afternoon. It is. 
involves our second place car, Terry Labonte, and Bobby Allison. Labonte's car smoking badly as they have uh, sheet metal rubbing against tire. Down the main straightaway, the yellow is out. There is Labonte in turn number one, having a very difficult time steering that car because the sheet metal is definitely rubbing against the tire on the right front of the car. A tough break for the young fellow who had driven a magnificent race here this afternoon, but something happened. Bobby Allison lost his car going into the turn, and Labonte hit him and hit the wall on the outside. You can see the damage. The tire is flat. He'll stay out on the racetrack, though, yeah. and uh, because they can't pass him. Benny Parsons is right behind him. I think Dale Earnhardt has already gotten around him, but he'll stay out for the checkered flag, I'm sure, because the white flag will be coming up the next lap. As Darryl here Walter, it is. Darryl Walter gets the white flag as we watch Labonte on the back stretch. But under the caution, they're not permitted to pass another car. And Although so, we see some cars passing Labonte there. but And so we will end this race under the caution, and Daryl Waltrip will be the winner. The field is being given the white flag right now. Terry Labonte staying out there, a tremendous disappointment for this young man who has driven a tremendous race here this afternoon, but uh, had problems with three laps to go. Daryl Waltrip behind the pace car going at about 40 miles an hour, comes off of the fourth turn and receives the checkered flag from Harold Kinder and Daryl Waltrip has won the Northwestern Bank 400 from North Wilkesboro. Daryl Waltrip moves to the outside of him. Terry Labonte tucked right in behind Daryl Waltrip. Now the car's down the 4,000 foot backstretch into the 33 degree banking of turn number three. Daryl Waltrip has moved in the lead. Terry Labonte has moved into second position with Benny Parsons riding right beside him. Kyle Petty in fourth. Here they come off of the fourth turn. On Parsons two. is frozen. He can't move. Onto the tri oval, and this is going to be the checkered flag. Here comes Daryl Waltrip. The body tried to make a move, but he cannot do it. Daryl Waltrip wins the Winston 500. Terry Labonte finishing in second position. Benny Parsons was third, and Kyle Petty was fourth. Get side by side, two automobiles. Baker and Waltrip get a little bit of breathing room. Petty goes into third spot. Here they come. Last time to three and four. Baker in that second spot. Waltrip in the lead. Can he stay there? Down they come. Crowd is up. 92,000 strong. Charging toward the finish line. Waltrip is there. Here comes Baker's move. They're 600 feet away from the line. Baker goes to the inside. Waltrip has won it. has pulled it off. He becomes the first man in history to win the Talladega 500 twice. Magnificent strategy. He stuck it out there. He refused to give any ground. Baker gave him his best shot, but it was Darrell Waltrip's day. Waltrip now into turn number three is going to be able to coast the victory from this point and for the tenth time this year Darrell Waltrip wins a Grand National race he sticks his left hand outside of the car and salutes as he comes down the straightaway second place is going to go to Harry Gann in car number 33 here he is in the middle of turn three and four off of the fourth turn Harry Gann finishes second there is the checkered flag to Harry and the third place driver is going to be Terry Labonte in car number 44. And for Terry, that is his first finish in a top five since the Bristol race earlier this year, the Bush 500. Darrell Waltrip moving to the high side of Sterling Marlin from Columbia, Tennessee, one of the candidates for Rookie of the Year. And Darrell Waltrip now setting his car into turn number three. Now turn number four off of it onto the main straightaway. And Darrell Waltrip has done it. He has won his first Grand National race in 1983. Here's the race for second. Allison and Gant come down, and it's Bobby Allison staving off the challenge to finish second, and Harry Gant places third. right now I would imagine just holding his breath as anybody would looking to the flag stand for the checkered flag
on it. Carol Waltrip wins the Marty Robbins 420. They're slapping hands down at the Junior Johnson pit. And taking second place is Bobby Allison. But the night belongs to this man, Darrell Waltrip of Franklin, Tennessee, and of course to the memory of Marty Robbins. Racing lane, which is right down and almost to the apron, lets it slide up and lets it go. Darrell Waltrip out of turn number four onto the straightaway, and the checkered flag falls. Darrell Waltrip has won the Trans South 500. Terry Labonte finishes in second position, about three seconds behind, and Bill Elliott will be shown in third place. exciting when you your crew does a good job the car runs well and you come off this fourth turn right here sigh big relief think about calling the bank at home and say i'll be home with the money guys <laughs> daryl waltrip picks up the checkered flags and daryl waltrip and the junior johnson team become victorious at richmond virginia and the richmond 400 so daryl waltrip your big winner six victories you can't really say anything bad about that one Walter into turn number three for the final time. Won't try to make the move on Baker. Here comes Ronnie Thomas as they move up on Doug Hebron. He just passed the great Darrell Walter coming off the fourth corner for the checkered play. Walter wins the Goodies 500. And don't count them out of the championship just yet. I would think not because, you know, a couple hundred points, he can make it up. Going down the back stretch, he decides to kind of hold forth there. He can see Harry again in his mirror. Harry can come right up and tap Darrell in the back bumper. Waltrip knows he's got the line. Out of turn number four, racing down into the checker flag, and Waltrip has win number seven. Gann is second. Allison holds off Bonnet for fourth and fifth place. Will go to Rusty Wallace. Here comes Rusty out of turn number four, and Rusty Wallace records one of his better finishes of the 1984 season. Tracking down Bobby Allison. Either one of these cars could run out of gas here and close to the finish. Absolutely. Darrell Waltrip's going to win this race. Here's Waltrip under Allison. Doesn't make the move as they come off turn number four. And nearly 150,000 race fans are on their feet. Waltrip has the gas. He goes the distance and wins the World 600. His first victory of 1985. He won the Winston yesterday, the All-Star race, in a similar but different automobile. That doesn't count as an official win. It's not one of the 28 races that count to the Winston Cup. Far enough ahead of Darrell that it's not going to be come into play before he can get the checkered play. Off turn four for the final time. Darrell Walter. 
down the front straightaway. Harold Kinder drops the checkered flag, and Waltrip scores his second victory of the season. Lamonti finishes second. Petty is third. Earnhardt is fourth. Bill Elliott. Bill Elliott, for the moment, seems to pick up a little bit of steam. He came out on number four, and that car just laid sideways for about 400 feet. And you can see him go almost down to the grass to try to get it back. Coming around to take the checkered flag this afternoon. Give win number three of the 1985 season to Darrell Waltrip. He is across the line, finishing in first. Second place will go to Ron Bouchard with his best finish of 1985. And finishing in third will be Harry Gant. to turn number three on the high side of Mike Waltrip. His brother, and here they come off the fourth corner. It's Daryl Waltrip winning the push 500. Terry Labonte crosses the line, finishes in second place. Jeff Bodine is going to be third, a lap down. And then Dale Earnhardt and Harry Gant, unofficially in fourth and fifth. Waltrip going into turn number three on this 5 8 mile semi-banked oval, looking for his third win of 1986. Darrell Waltrip coming down to collect win number 70 and Jeff Bonai as a second place. Certainly can certainly do. One lap to go. Final lap. White flag, and Labonte will look to the outside. There's Waltrip. Earnhardt now coming out of turn two. Labonte trying to get around. They ride high, and Terry just nudges the wall. Now they go down the back straightaway. There's nobody sitting here in Martinsville. Oh, the three cars touch. They get together. Labonte spins. Waltrip stays low. Darrell Waltrip is going to win here at Martinsville. Waltrip takes the checkered flag. Earnhardt will finish second. Labonte and Bobby Allison get together. They will finish, at least Labonte will in this case, finish third if he can get the car going again. 130,000 strong. Let's see who's going to take it in turn number three. Waltrip, a beautiful line. Here comes Wallace moving to the inside. Wallace pulling ever so much closer as they come to the strike. And he drives into the grass, Wallace, as he finally has to settle for second place. It'll be Darrell Waltrip, the first man in history to win this event four times. Let me tell you something. It's really neat. Every person here is standing and cheering for Darrell Waltrip, a guy that they all used to love to boo. And that's how the things can change. And that's a great victory for Jeff Hammond. It's a great victory for Rick Hendricks. After some of the adversity they had, we're glad to see Darrell back in that victory circle where he belongs. The defending champion of this race is about to successfully defend his championship. He won in Charlotte earlier this year in the World 600, and now here he comes off the fourth corner. The hand is in the air. Daryl Waltrip wins the Goodies 500. Here comes Alan Kowicki off the fourth corner, and Alan finishes second, but he is limping across the line. And there's the happy tied crew. last lap. The interval is immense. It's a question of fuel. Can Waltrip hold out? He could have coasted now, I think. Yeah, he's about close enough now that he could coast across the start yeah. finish line and still win. Out of turn four, after 17 years of effort, the Daytona 500 belongs to Franklin, Tennessee's Darrell Waltrip. He's done it. He's done it. Second place at stake to the line. Number 25. Schrader will take second. Seven seconds back, almost eight. And right behind him comes Dale Earnhardt. Do you believe it? Back and sees Earnhardt closing in just a bit more. End of the third turn now. Waltrip 
continues his lead in the 17 car. Earnhardt, about 100 yards back. They come off of the fourth turn. The checkered flag now being displayed, and it's displayed to Darrell Waltrip, who wins at the Atlanta 500. Darrell Waltrip has scored the victory here, his second win of the year. Earnhardt comes across the line in second place, but the day belongs to Darrell Waltrip. <laughs> Comes down the back straight, halfway around on the final time. Now into turn three and in turn four, where Jeff Bodine was taken out in the early race. Here comes Waltrip off the fourth corner. His hand is in the air, waving to the crowd, and Daryl Waltrip has won the panel sweatshirt 500 here at Martinsville. And the tie crew is in celebration in victory in uh, the pit area. Larry Pearson once again. Bill Elliott, Mark Martin are running side by side. Looks like Mark Martin, they're going to race it right to the line. And he is, that is a good battle as Bodine is pulled away in fourth. And Martin is challenging Elliott for the strike. Coming down for the checkers. It is Darrell Walter for the fourth time. And there is a little bit of a slide coming to the line by Mark Martin. And across the strike, it'll be number nine, Bill Elliott for fifth. of 1989 and his 11th here at Bristol. Off of corner number four, Daryl Waltrip wins the Bush 500 at Bristol International Raceway. Here comes second place, Alan Kowicki will finish second, Ricky Rudd third, and Harry Gant in fourth. Those cars on the lead lap. And in fifth is going to be Terry Lamani. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Yeah, he was two laps down at one time, and now up there in second place and closing in on the lead. Look at him fight the wheel coming off the corner. Two laps to go. And Michael, Michael Waltrip, Waltrip has spun in turn number one. The race could end under caution, or will it? Michael's got his car rolling. He might get out of the way. We'll see. He drives down the banking. The car is rolling. And the yellow NASCAR flag officials, is up. Yes, the NASCAR officials wave the yellow flag, and this race is going to end under caution. Here comes Waltrip to the flag, and this is going to do it. The yellow and the white flags come out simultaneously. Darrell Waltrip has won. Checkered flag hasn't waved yet, but it's all over. The tie crew celebrates as Darrell Waltrip wins his fourth Woody's 500 in a row. Make that his third in a row. Let's go to uh, the pit area. Jeff Hammond with a comment to crew chief on this car. Hoping that his driver can hold on for just a half lap. Now he's in turn number four. Darrell Waltrip comes down and wins the first Union 400 at North Wilkesboro. Tell you what, there's a happy crew. I was over there back in January. Those guys were working 12 hours a day, seven days a week. They went to work at seven in the morning. They got off at seven o'clock at night, seven days a week. So they've earned this victory. And this is the fifth time in seven races this year that Daryl Waltrip has been in the top ten. But this is the big one, the victory for the Western Auto Chevrolet and Daryl Waltrip. Daryl Waltrip now. Sets up for turn number three for the final time this afternoon. The Western Auto Chevy looking for his second victory of 1991. Into turn number three. Keeping the car low on the racetrack. Now coming off the corner. Sees the checkered flag and Daryl Waltrip wins the champion spark plug 500 here at Pocono. Earnhardt second followed by Mark Martin. Then Harry Gant, Jeff Bodine, Ernie Irvin. Ken Schrader, Sterling Marlin, Morgan Shepard, and Derek Cope. He's got just a, another quarter of it to manipulate, and then on to the long straightaway, and halfway down it for the checkered flag. Yeah, he's stretched out now over Harry Gann, and the Western Auto crew is saying, come on, Daryl, come on, Daryl. Here he comes off of corner number three. Didn't come for us right now. He's got it. Daryl Walter was one. Crew 
is celebrating already. They know he's got a one. He can probably coast the rest of the way. Here's Waltrip off of corner number four, and the checkered flag waves. Daryl Waltrip has won the Bud 500 at Bristol. Jay Gelder, the mechanic of the race, works his magic, takes Daryl to the victory. Second position goes to Dale Earnhardt. Third was Schrader. Fourth, Kyle Petty. And in fifth position was, I believe, Alan Kowicki. Was it Kowicki? Alan Kowicki finished fifth. Bill Elliott was sixth. Get the track dried and we cannot get the race right. restarted. Well, man, and so Daryl Waltrip has won the Southern 500.